Now, you talked about studying and engineering. In particular, you are a mechatronic engineer. Is that correct? Yeah, I am a mechatronics engineer. What is a mechatronic engineer? Well, basically, it's the mix between electronics and mechanics, um, except uh, to make it more, I guess, efficient. Uh, they mix these two degrees together because they work, um, they can work together very well um, because obviously a mechanic doesn't know much about the electronics, but they are essential one each other. So this mix is like um, combining everything. It's just like all the skills from electronics, electric, mechanics, um, robotics, what else? Uh, obviously, like the theoretical base, like physics as well, math, um, all that stuff. Yeah. This sounds really difficult. This does not sound easy at all. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not easy, <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm very glad I took the decision of studying mechatronics. Okay. So, what kind of products would you make? I mean, as a, as a mechatronic engineer, like, if you said, voila, this is what I've made, what am I looking at? Well, uh, it depends. Like, you can literally make everything. That's, that's the thing that I really like from this degree because um, when I finished university, I had a friend, uh, a classmate, actually, that his dad is on, he owns, like, swimming clubs. So he needed, like, clocks for the swimmers for the athletes. So we, we decided to design a clock, like a digital clock, a scoreboard for him. And that's how we started a business and we didn't realize, um, but we made like the electronics from scratch. Um, we were working with aluminum to make like the, um, like the box where the clock mm -hmm. is. The casing? Cabinet, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, we eventually were like making a lot of clocks, a lot of chronometers. Mm -hmm. um, we started a company, so. And yeah, the US company US. was uh, Lumetrix? Lumetrix, yeah. Yeah, correct. Oh, how did you come up with this name? Uh, it just came up randomly <laughs> because well, we were working with LED, um, the little lights, and Lum, which is Lume. Um, it comes from a, a light uh, measurement and tricks. It comes from electronics. Oh. So we mixed it. And we, we are now Lumetrix. So we were using lights and electronics. And we mix it to Lumetrix. Very cool. And, and this business is still in operation back in Mexico? Yeah, but it's not the same as before um, because me and my classmate, we, we obviously started. But then he started going more into his dad business. Um, and me, I kept the, the business running, but then I came to Australia. And we like literally stopped making the products. Um, but we just randomly make like just a small one, like clocks for athletes. We don't make scoreboards anymore, like the big ones. Um, because I guess he's more busy now at the moment. <laughs> and me, obviously, I was more focused when I came to Australia just to learn English and then um, just working, you know, um, and find so a way what, to... What's to the biggest scoreboard you've made? Sorry? What's the biggest scoreboard you've made? Uh, we made one for baseball and it was huge. It was like three meters per one and a half meters. So yeah, three meters by one and a half. Uh, and it had like around 30, 30 numbers. So it was a lot of numbers um, because wow. obviously you have all these games and you have to indicate each one, each, each of the games with a number. And then at the end, you just show the total, but then you need to show as well the time, the, the strikes, the falls. Um, and yeah, it just just that, but it was massive. It was really, really amazing. It was a very good project. 
What did you learn from working as an entrepreneur with your business partner? Uh, well, the first thing I have learned is uh, that you need to think in general, you need to be very versatile, uh, think from the marketing perspective, from the salesperson perspective, <laughs> uh, obviously as a technician, as, a, as an engineer, uh, you need to think in all that technical, um, technical data, you know, like all the electronics, all the, the base of electronics, um, the rules that you need to follow to like the regulations, you know? Um, yeah, you basically need to learn everything and improve each part of that because as a startup company, you obviously don't have that, um, that help unless your company grows like really fast is when you can hire someone. But we got into a point where we started hiring people and then I had to come to Australia and we, we stopped like producing big numbers. So yeah. Right. That's what I would say. You need to be versatile. Very versatile. When it comes yeah. to taking these two worlds in which you live, right? The engineering world, which is about the technical stuff, the little details. And then you yeah. look at the consumer world, which is about how someone's actually going to use the product. How do you find mm -hmm. that comfortable balance in between? Uh, well, I think it's just like you focus on what the customer needs. Um, because obviously for us, we didn't have that marketing research done, but it was a necessity that, uh, my friend's dad, he needed those clocks. So we, we went straight to there like, okay, you need clocks. We're going to start making clocks for the athletes. And then we eventually got this information about clubs, like actual numbers. And we were just like, People were asking to us, like, do you make scoreboards for football or bas basketball or um, volleyball? And we were like, not at the moment, but we can design something for you. Because basically for us, uh, it was the same process. We just needed to make it bigger. So we started uh, customizing scoreboards. And that's how we... Um, we supply all those, all those necessities for the customers. Um, but I think it was a bit hard because obviously you can't target uh, with that many products. And at some point when we were customizing, we got into the point where we say, okay, maybe it's just better focusing in football scoreboards because so many people is ordering those ones and little, um, chronometers like timers and those those two were the ones that kept the company stable and growing really really fast so yeah i think that's what you need to do just like improve that area of communication with the customers and then target them and then find a specific product to to sell you know just to keep growing it's always an interesting challenge as a business when you've got a lot of different customers asking for different things and you've got the ability to do it, but then to realize that actually, hold on, we've got to build our core audience first with our core product because that's yeah. what's going to bring you most of the money. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great to do all these other little projects as well, which can be additional revenue streams, but the time mm -hmm. it takes to do it, it can eventually end up being quite unprofitable. So it's a difficult yeah. balance. But of course, all business at some point have to expand. You know, if you, mm -hmm. if you build great phones, one day you have to go beyond phones and, and do something else as well in case your market yeah. uh, gets into a bit of trouble. 